on December 10th, Juma got in touch with Hush Puppy and informed him of the scam that was already in play. He painted the victim businessman as a gullible wealthy investor that is easily squeezed out of his money. And for that, he needed Abbas' help in squeezing every last penny out of the victim. Abbas was brought into the play due to his global expertise in defrauding people. And with the prospects of more easy money coming his way, he immediately agreed to join the scam. A plan was hatched. Abbas would come in as a director at Wells Fargo with the name Malik. Apart from this, he will assemble his team in the United States to set up a phony bank account, business names and other required arsenal to successfully execute the scam. But there was one problem, splitting the proceeds. According to messages obtained by the FBI, Abbas proposed to Juma about the payouts. Abbas said, What I had in mind was if there was 150,000, I get 50,000 and you guys get 100,000. Juma agreed to the proposal. And with that, the second phase of the scam was set in motion. When the wealthy businessman from Qatar paid 150000 to Okach and Partners Farm in Kenya to help with the release of his $15 million loan, Juma informed him that Mr. Malik from the US would be contacting him with a solution on how to get the $15 million into his bank account. Hashpapi, now playing Mr. Malik, a Wells Fargo bank director, was ready for his act. The Gucci billionaire master will this time not be wearing flashy Gucci shorts for Instagram, but will be clad in a clean-cut suit as he assumed the role of a Wells Fargo bank director. But before calling the businessman, there was work to be done. The corn had to be watertight, given the large sums of money involved. Abbas had to ensure all bases were covered, and this is where Vincent came in. A techie fellow from New York State, Vincent had been in the underworld BC gangs for a long time. While he never was at the center of any scheme, his tech knowledge came in handy in creating the necessary smoke and mirrors make-believe scenarios. Vincent created a fake bank website and integrated an automated phone line that would be used to make the scam credible. The gang would then use the website email and phone numbers to communicate with the Qatari investor and convince him that his $15 million loan had been secured. Together with Abbas and Juma, Vincent created false stories and artifices to induce the victim to send additional payments to bank accounts in the United States and Kenya. On December 11, 2019, Abbas emailed the Qatari businessman, introducing himself as Mr. Malik, a Wells Fargo bank manager based in Chicago. Abbas convinced the victim that his bank will assist in transferring the loan to his account at the Qatar National Bank. However, in the world of large financial transactions, trust is of the essence, and when hundreds and thousands of dollars are involved, you would want to speak to a person rather than rely on emails. Abbas knew this and was ready with a play. While he was good at controlling the play, he knew the Qatar businessman would smell something fishy when they talked on the phone due to his heavy Nigerian accent. First, you guys pay me the charges for me to come. I'll be social media influencer that they pay me. However, a phone call was necessary to build the trust of the businessman. For this play, Abbas wrote in an Ifowoshe. On December 16th, 2019, Abbas texted Anifawoshe, who was residing in New York State at the time, and hatched a plan. Anifawoshe had lived in the US for many years, and therefore, his Nigerian accent was less noticeable than that of Abbas. According to the plan, Anifawoshe will call the Qatari businessman, posing as a Mr. Malik, who was a New York banker. Anifawoshe called the Qatari businessman and introduced himself as a bank executive from New York 
who is in a position to help clear the $15 million loan. However, to sort out the mess that had led to the funds to be frozen, the investor will need to open a bank account in the US where the money will be wired to. The investor was far away in Qatar, and to save him the trip of going to open a bank account in person in the US, Mr. Malik offered to do it on his behalf. Being a senior bank personnel with good clearance levels, it was possible to open a bank account on behalf of the investor without the investor coming there in person. The Qatari businessman agreed, and a bank account was immediately set up in his company's name. Satisfied with the progress they had made, Abbas reported to Juma. Around the same time, the Qatari businessman texted Juma, saying that he had talked to Mr. Malik from the US and that he had been informed the US bank account would be set up and the $15 million loan would be transferred to London after clearing with the US bank account. The corn was moving on well and bases would be covered at the right time. Having had a great conversation with the Qatari businessman, Abbas instructed Anifa Woshe to set up a business name statement with the Los Angeles County Registrar Recorder, County Clerk's Office, and open a bank account in Los Angeles in the Qatari businessman's company's name. With this information available, Abbas contacted the TechSavvy Vincent to help with creating a durable power of attorney document. Using a high-end printer and templates easily found online, Vincent came up with a fraudulent document that would otherwise look legitimate to the untrained eye. When this was done, Hashpapi contacted the Qatari businessman to inform him of the progress. Now, the businessman had a real business registered in the United States and a bank account where his $15 million loan would be transferred. However, what had actually happened is that Abbas and Anifowoshe had registered a company with a name similar to the Qatari businessman's company and used it to open an account at Wells Fargo branch in Canago Park, California. To make the whole thing look legitimate, Abbas sent the businessman a durable power of attorney document, asking him to give him the power of attorney over the account. He then sent the businessman online login information for the bank account, asking him to log in. Meanwhile, a huge payoff was simmering. Abbas needed legitimate bank account that could receive the funds that the Qatari businessman was going to send. Usually, in such transactions, scammers use fraudulently obtained bank accounts that they can control. However, most banks have put tight restrictions regarding the amount of money that can be wired to banks without raising suspicion. Since the payday was fast approaching, the gang needed a quick fix. Never they want to back out of a big payday, Abbas contacted the other numbers guy, Agba Biaka. Agba Biaka did not have any mule accounts, but with the prospects of a large pay of looming, she decided to give her own personal bank account details to Abbas to be used to receive the money. The bank account was held at Capital One and included Agba Biaka names, residential address, routing number, and the bank's address. Meanwhile, Abbas made a call to Kenya to the ideas man, Mr. Juma. He explained to Juma of a scheme to get the Qatari businessman to pay up to £250,000 to fund an investor account based in the US. The next day, Hashpapi was on the phone with Anifo Woshe, directing him to call the Qatari businessman to get on with the plan. And if Awoshe, who was acting as Mr. Malik, the Wells Fargo bank manager, told the investor it would be impossible to send him the $15 million to his personal bank account, which they had opened for him, since the account needed to be activated with a minimum balance of $250,000. With the huge additional fees to be cleared, the Qatari businessman started sensing something is amiss. In a long con, there's always a point when the victim senses a red flag. This is the point that one is supposed to get out of a deal and salvage what is left. However, amazingly, most people continue going down the rabbit hole, going deep into the scam, 
hoping that the payoff will come out right as expected. The Qatari businessman was taken aback by the huge figure. He became hesitant and insisted on speaking to Juma. When he received the call in Nairobi, Juma was taken by surprise by the new move that Abbas was making. The ideas man had not been kept in the loop regarding the $250,000 that Mr. Malik was indicating had to be wired to activate the Qatari businessman's US bank account. His heart started beating and a thin sweat trickled down his squared chin. Juma sensed that Abbas and his US co-conspirators were about to double-cross him. He directed the businessman not to wire any funds until he got clarification from Mr. Malik, the bank manager. On sensing he would be defrauded if the money was wired to the US, Juma told the victim to hold on. Was Hashpapi trying to muscle him out of the deal? Juma texted Abbas, confronting him of the $250,000 payment that Mr. Malik had requested from the Qatari businessman. He wanted to know how much commission he was going to get out of the deal. Abbas assured Juma that everything was good and his commission would be processed as agreed. He finished by texting. Almost certain that the money would be wired, Abbas contacted two mules whom he had worked with before in Nigeria. He wanted them to receive $250,000 on his behalf and then take out their share before wiring the rest of the money to him. However, the deal failed because the three fraudsters could not agree on how to split the money. The mules wanted 50% of the money and Abbas saw this as a ripoff. This time, the money will have to be wired to different bank accounts. Unable to find who will receive the money, Abbas contacted a luxury watchmaker in Florida, US with a request to make what is still his most flamboyant purchase ever, a Richard Mille RM 1103 watch. On December 23, 2019, the Florida watch seller sent Abbas multiple photographs of Richard Mille watches and texted him. A temporary setback is not something that Abbas could take to heart. After ironing out the differences with Juma, he set out to shop for a gem that would celebrate his new score. This time, it was a rose gold and titanium Richard Mille RM 1103 watch which retailed at 230000 sold at the Florida watch shop. The watch seller sent him a Wells Fargo bank account number where the money for the watch should be deposited. The billionaire Gucci Mas was just days away from owning a rare watch that will raise his status on Instagram. Abbas BC schemes involved huge sums of money. And when the money was wired, it had to be received into legitimate bank accounts. The numbers guy swung into action at this stage. Fashola and Agagbiaka looked for bank accounts in the United States that could receive huge sums of money from the Qatari victim. The work of these two players was the classic old-school grifter operation. The two would identify individuals in the United States who are willing to let their bank accounts to be used to receive some funds. Often, they will indicate that their personal bank accounts were not cleared to receive huge sums of money. And for their troubles, the co-conspirators who provided their bank account details to be used for the business deal would be promised a cut from the total proceeds. Fashola and Agagbiaka worked full-time to find bank accounts that could be used for the scam. Whenever they located a bank account, they will send Abbas a message regarding the terms and conditions of the bank account owner. Apart from this, they will send the necessary information required to transfer funds into the bank account. The information included the name of the account holder, the bank account name, the routing number, and the bank SWIFT code. But the money was coming in fast and in huge sums, and finding bank accounts to be used for receiving the payments wasn't easy. As a result, sometimes Agagbeka will provide her own bank account details to a bus for the purposes of receiving the payment from the Qatari businessman. When Abbas received the details of a US bank account that could accept the payments, he, together with Juma, will send the account information to the Qatari businessman. The two fraudsters, through a web of false promises, will make the victim wire the funds to the bank accounts identified. As soon as the money hit the bank accounts in the US, Fashola and Agagbeka will swing into action. The two scammers immediately withdrew the money 
through different ways, including cash withdrawals, wire transfers, and teller transfers to other accounts and issuance of cashier's checks. The different withdrawal methods were an attempt of concealing and disguising the nature, source, location, owners, and control of the fraudulently obtained funds. With the money withdrawn, there was still more work to be done, or should we call it play to be played? On Christmas Eve 2019, Hashpapi contacted the Qatari investor and gave him two bank accounts. The accounts were to be deposited with a total of $330,000. $100,000 was to be deposited to a Capital One bank account that belonged to a bus gang member, Agagbiaka. The other $230,000 was to be wired to the Florida Watch Sellers bank account at Wells Fargo. On 26th December 2019, the Qatari investor kept his word and wired $100,000 to a Capital One bank account that belonged to Agagbiaka. Almost immediately, Agagbiaka withdrew $7,100 to an unregulated money exchanger who will then transfer the amount in Naira to a Nigerian bank account that Abbas controlled. Later during the day, Abbas texted Agagbiaka to further withdraw $20,000 through the unregulated money exchanger. However, Agagbiaka had been in the business for a long time and knew that such a sequence of quick withdrawals would raise suspicion. She refused the order. Meanwhile, the Gucci billionaire master had to keep the den of thieves abreast of the new score. He sent an Ifowoshe a photograph confirming that the $230,000 wire transfer sent to the Florida watch shop bank account was successful. He also attached a photo of the rose gold titanium Richard Mill RM1103 that he intended to spend the $230,000 on. In a celebratory mood, Abbas also sent a screenshot of the bank account at Capital One to show that the Qatari businessman had deposited the requested $100,000. The new bank balance was $100,058.31. And if a washer was ecstatic, he believed in a bus and always knew he would deliver. The two fraudsters had worked together for a long time in similar scams but had never been caught. Always a big spender, a bus asked an if a washer for ideas on what he should spend the $100,000 in the Capital One bank account on. And if a watch suggested an Audemars Piquet skeleton watch. This is a special luxury watch that usually retails anywhere from $150,000 to $250,000. The next day, Agagbiaka withdrew $10,000 from the Capital One bank account through cashier's check. She then deposited the money into another bank account. Money was within reach and in plenty. Always in a thirst for exclusivity in the billionaire's club, Abbas thought it was time for him to get a second citizenship passport. In the shadowy world of dollar millionaires, having multiple passports is a norm. With multiple passports, the millionaires receive exclusive benefits to various countries. Abbas, the Gucci billionaire master, chose St. Christopher and Nevis, also known as St. Kitts and Nevis. Holders of this country's passport can travel to over 100 countries in Europe and the Caribbean without a visa. This passport is attractive for the wealthy for a variety of reasons, including The St. Kitts and Nevis passport is very well regarded and has excellent reputation and only relatively few passports have been issued under the country's citizenship by investment program by the government. And for just between $200,000 and $250,000, this passport is accessible to the wealthy. Abbas was in his way to the riches and he needed the passport. As he thought of the next flashy thing to buy, Abbas contacted a citizenship acquisitions agency in St. Kitts and Nevis to discuss his prospects of obtaining a passport. The agency emailed him with a list of requirements and fees to get the passport. As the new year ushered in, Abbas, in his usual opulence, took to Instagram to keep his followers up to date with his big spender living, he wrote. On 3rd January 2020, 
Abbas purchased a gold watch and titanium Richard Mill RM1103 watch from a jewelry store in New York for $230,000. He then asked Agag Biaka to pick up the items on his behalf. The billionaire Gucci master could not wait to get the precious items in his Dubai residence. Always up with a solution, and Fawoshe recommended one of his trusted mules to a bus. The mule will take the items directly to a bus in exchange for a small fee. This didn't bother the billionaire Gucci master. After all, money is for spending, leaving la vida loca. Fashola did the errand of taking the merchandise to the mule. And on the 4th of January, the mule was on his way to Dubai to meet with the bus to deliver the rust gold and the titanium Richard Mill RM1103 watch. As he got his hands on the consignment, Abbas reflected. 2019 had been a good year for him. From being recognized at the Ritz Hotel in Dubai to lavish parties being held by Gucci, he was living the life. 2020 was looking to be an even better year, and now he just needed a second passport to level up his spending game. Or perhaps hide away from authorities when the chips come falling down.